Okay, so I'm very excited. Released yesterday in the United States and came to my door today, Queen in 3D by Brian May. This is from the London Stereoscopic Company and it is written by Brian May. For those of you who do not know, Brian May is the guitarist for Queen. Most of you know that, but what some of you might not know, and don't worry about that glare, that'll get, uh, It'll get gone after we take the wrapping off. But um, what you may not know about Brian May is he had the great foresight long time ago in the early 70s to start carrying around a stereo camera. Uh, they were filmed at the time, a stereo realist camera, Kodak cameras, that had two lenses so that a right image and a left image could be made and uh, basically think of it like a view master and uh, where you can see depth in the pictures, like a 3D movie, except in stills. And he carried this all around, and in this book are more than 300 previously unseen stereo images. So this is not going to really be a spoiler for the book because you'll see what's inside the book, but there's no way to experience it without actually looking uh, at the stereo images through the uh, Brian May's Owl Viewer, which I have a couple of them over here, but I get a new one in here, and uh, word on the street is it's in Freddie Mercury Yellow. So, um, very excited to open this. Queen, <clears throat> not my favorite band in history, but anyone who's got an ear for music has to respect Queen, their contributions, and um, they did make a hell of a hell of an amazing music, but um, my respect goes to Brian May for his contributions to um, the 3D community. Uh, it was through him specifically that I got the 3D bug. Uh, it all started when um, I was doing some research on virtual reality. I've had, I have multiple virtual reality viewers and was pretty much into it and always looking for a better viewer. I stumbled upon his owl virtual reality kit and if you'll see it doesn't look like a normal virtual reality glasses it looks like um, stereoscopic viewer from the late 1800s early 1900s and so I definitely was interested and uh, started doing some research into what he was up to with the London stereoscopic company and basically <laughs> it was a gateway drug from like computerized graphic virtual reality 360 type of stuff into Victorian stereoscopic cards, um, stereoscopic images, all, all manner of things, three-dimensional, but <clears throat> including taking my own pictures and, and doing conversions of 2D pictures, but he was definitely the, the uh, starting point for my journey. This is my second book from the London Stereoscopic Company. The first, and it's in this, from what I know of this book, from seeing it on, you know, in media and from different people talking about it, although I've not seen inside it. It does come with a, a, another owl viewer, and uh, this is his viewer. It's very similar to a virtual reality viewer, the only difference is the spacing between the lenses and where you would put your phone in this case. This owl viewer, you will be able to put on the pictures. So for instance, here's two pictures here. You'd put it right there, you'd look through, and the left eye sees a slightly different picture than the right eye because we have binocular vision and because of the glorious design, we have, we're able to see depth. And uh, if you've not, experimented, I guess, with looking at 3D. To me, it's just as important a dimension as color, as resolution. Um, it really gives, it, it allows the pictures that are taken, whether they're photographs or drawings, to really take on a, a whole new dimension. I don't mean that to be funny, but they, they feel different. You really do feel like you're there. So this is the first book I got from London Stereoscopic Company, The Village Lost and Found. This was written by Brian May and Elena Vidal, and it's about um, stereoscopic cards 
that were produced by a guy named T.R. Williams of a village that really nobody knew after he made this collection of stereoscopic cards and uh, sort of this is a search. They found the village and they take pictures of what the stereoscopic cards are and in this case different pictures but they actually found the village. Here's, here's an example of what the stereo card is and of course you'd look through the owl viewer and here's what it looks like today or in 2008. So this is a very very interesting book but one of my greatest interests is rock and roll and to have Brian May again bringing that stereo camera around since the early 70s to capture the rock and roll scene and Queen on stage and, and behind the scenes is, is definitely a treat. I can't contain my excitement anymore. Let's go ahead and unwrap this baby. Sorry about all the camera shaking. That's going to stop once we get this over here. Okay. So on the front is what's, uh, you've seen this on bookmarks and everything. This is called a lenticular three-dimensional picture. It's got different layers, plastic layers, that when you look from different directions, you have a three-dimensional image. So far, this one does not look great. Of course, that's Freddie Mercury. Does not look great so far to me, but hopefully when I take the wrapping off, it will pop out. I'm not a big fan of lenticular pictures. They don't interest me. There's a lot of people in the 3D community who very much like them and produce them, but not my thing. There's another thing that I, I really don't appreciate that uh, people make, and those are what are called wiggle grams, where you take those two views on the stereo card over here, and you'd actually make a, you might have seen this, you make a GIF of each picture going backward and forward, and it sort of gives a pseudo three-dimensional feel to pictures. I hate that. I like stereo pictures where you view through the owl viewer, or another viewer, or cross viewing where you cross your eyes, sort of like the uh, magic eye from the 90s, where you let your eyes relax and it forms a picture. You can actually do that with photographs and see them in three dimensions and it's uh, definitely exhilarating. Okay, so here we go. Get a little bit of an angle over here, maybe some more room. So, just like Village Lost and Found, you have your book. Eh, the lenticular is not, not much better with the wrapping off, just not my thing. Here, London Stereoscope, the company, is going to be the Owl Viewer. And you assemble it. We're not going to assemble the viewer because, like I said, we have multiple viewers over there. This is just the same thing as those two. But from listening to interviews, this is um, sort of the Wembley yellow that uh, Freddie Mercury made famous wearing the yellow outfits and the yellow jackets and, in the 80s. And so I thought that was pretty cool. Nod to Fred. So here is the book, very high quality feel to it. Let me see if I can angle this a little bit better for you. I don't have any overhead, but that should do. So, obviously we're not gonna go through the whole book. We're gonna do a quick skim. I wanna show you how the book is laid out. I wanna show you the three dimensional parts of it and the, uh, the 2D parts. I mean, you had to put some 2D in. The, the uh, pages are very soft. Great opening over here. I'll hold that up. Brian. Okay, how to use the book. You're gonna go into the instructions. And uh, it's talking about Queen's journey. Oh, okay, so here's a story that Brian 
um, talks about a lot. He says his interest in three dimensions and the way that Brian turned me onto it, Brian was turned onto it through um, this viewer inside of a Weetabix box, which I guess is a cereal that they had in Great Britain. And from the moment he saw things in stereo, he was just, that was it. He had to have it. So he, when they toured the world, started uh, collecting everything stereo, but especially stereo cards. So whenever they went into a city, he would go to the antique shops, and I've been doing a lot of that myself, and he'd get collections of these old Victorian stereo cards. And, you know, he'd have the viewer, and it, cameras were available back then, film cameras, like I said, the Stereo Realist, the Kodak camera, also the Viewmaster camera. To take stereo, uh, it was a little bit of a lengthy process to get the pictures out and to develop them and everything, so they never caught on huge, but um, for a while they were very, very popular, and he was an enthusiast and just happened to see a lot of things in the world that not a lot of us get to see. There's a picture of the Weetabix here. So I'm going to go pretty fast now. He's explaining stereo and uh, how the pictures were taken. These are some 3D cameras. So this is the Stereo Realist. Um, of course, he's collecting all different kinds. This is him back in 1978 with stereo cameras. And I've seen him say in interviews that he would give his stereo cameras to the photographer that would be photographing the band. Um, I gotta tell you, as interested as I am in sharing this with all of you, I'm getting very, very interested in delving into this pretty intensely tonight because these pictures are very cool so far. And uh, again, it's not, it's not a spoiler because you can't experience this without the stereo viewer. Okay, so just going on, seeing the layout. There's Freddie Mercury. Uh, in the, on the London Stereoscopic Company's website, quite a few of these Queen pictures have been out for a while um, where you could, you could view them on the website. They've also had some Queen sets of cards, but they never had this many pictures. This book's been in the making for a very, very long time. Um, it was released in, in, I believe, May in the UK, and um, people are really enjoying this book. And what's not to enjoy? Going on a little bit more. Again, just want to show you the layout. You can see there's different styles of stereo pictures taken here from different cameras. Sometimes a stereo picture will be separated like this. You'll see very distinct separations, and sometimes they'll just be together like that, sort of meshed. It depends on how the picture was taken, either two separate lenses or what's called a lens splitter. One lens that uh, splits the image into two. Like this most likely is done with a lens splitter. Now, obviously lots of pictures of Freddie. Freddie was a very photogenic guy, but um, the rest of the band, Roger Taylor, John Deacon is here. And a lot of behind the scenes. Very, very cool so far, going into the first tour of the United States, tour of Japan, the fans. All right, I have to see the quality. Give me a moment. I have to see the quality of the stereo. It would be unfair to talk about the book and not see the quality of the stereo. So I'm gonna take a self-indulgent break for a moment and find me a good pig. There's a good enough picture. So what you would do is you would take the owl viewer, put it so you're right over there. And there's really very few things as magical as seeing these pictures in three dimensions. You really, you really feel as if you're there. There's something in the brain when you see depth. It gives you um, literally a feeling of being there that, that two dimensions, as, as crisp and clear and high resolution as the picture might be, I would, without a doubt, trade a picture of this quality where you can see depth for 
the most beautiful 2D flat picture. You know, great pictures, Madison Square Garden, crew. There are a lot of pictures here. There's definitely a lot of pictures. He's giving the fans what they want. So, some more touring and snapping. So you can see he's an enthusiast. This wasn't just a couple of, uh, couple of pictures. This work is near and dear to his heart. I know he's involved with the London Stereoscopic Company and putting out really high quality high quality things, but this is the first queen-centric thing they've really done. Okay, so these were, these were the pictures I was really looking forward to because when you look at a stereo picture and you can actually see the smoke and subtleties in an image, it's really, really spectacular. You didn't see that in the Victorian stereoscopic cards. <laughs> this is something that uh, You don't get to see a lot. Very, very, very cool pictures. The quality of the film pictures here is very high. The quality of the print is very high. You really can see all the detail. It's not pixelated. Um, if that's the word, I guess you, you would say a fuzzy picture because they're not really pixels, but the um, print is, is done very well. And that's actually very exciting. Again, as good as the village lost and found was for viewing stereos, and it is it is spectacular. Their um, the resolution on them simply because they were made in the 1800s cannot compare to something made in the 1970s. So here's a statue of Freddie in Montreux. Great picture. And let's see, a lot, of, a lot of Asia, a lot of stuff over here. And it actually goes into the later years after Freddie died and into the uh, Adam Lambert years. Ooh, Flash Gordon premiere. So all in all, what I wanted to see about this book by looking at it without the viewer is that it had as many pictures as they promised and that the subject matter was as cool. Uh, here's another one that I just absolutely have to look at. I mean, looking out from the stage into, uh, you know, that's uh, in Sao Paulo, 1981, 131,000 people. That's an amazing picture. So, great band, great book. Freddie Mercury, probably the greatest front man of all time. I, I don't think anyone can argue that point. But again, for me, you know, I love Queen. Who doesn't love Queen? I love the music. If I had to show an alien what rock and roll was all about and didn't have time to get them into the catalogs of some of my, my favorite bands, and because they're not quite as approachable, Queen sort of always put it right out there at 100 110% and uh, very rarely would turn a Queen song off the radio. But Brian May um, really turned me on to, to a really interesting hobby uh, that I'm going to have for sure for the rest of my life and definitely presented an excellent book. This book was $51, I think it's 54, came out yesterday in the United States, and here's the Adam Lambert years. I think they've been selling it on tour, although well, actually the Paul Rogers years from uh, Bad Company. Not my favorite singer, I never understood that, but anyway, there's Adam Lambert. And uh, what can I say? I just wanted to share the excitement of, oh, that's very cool, share the excitement of opening this up um, with anyone who's interested uh, in seeing it, and I very much look forward to putting the Owl Viewer together and looking at this incredible book. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, thanks for taking the time, and I definitely suggest from the four pictures I've looked at, uh, from his other works as well, and the subject matter, and 
all of the interesting stories and asides that I've heard him speak about that are going to be in the book definitely looks like a good, uh, a good purchase. So thanks for watching.